Welcome to the session on diversity recruiting. I am Anup Gupta, co-founder and CEO of Seekout. This past year has been a difficult one with the pandemic. I hope you, your family and loved ones are doing well. Uh, we feel very blessed and grateful that our family and team has done very well. This past year has also brought to the forefront the numerous racial and ethnic inequalities that exist in our society. There has been a deep call for action. Uh, in fact, in a recent survey of CEOs by Deloitte, 96% of the CEOs said this is a high priority for them in the coming year. Uh, we've also had thousands of CEOs sign the diversity pledge. And of course, you know, many of these pledges get translated into targets or goals. Uh, but the hard part of how to translate these goals, these great intentions into actions and actual results fall on the shoulders of many of you who are present in the audience. That is where the rubber meets the road. That is where you take action to drive real concrete and measurable outcomes. Uh, I believe that there are concrete actions to be done to produce the result. And many and many of our customers are doing so every day. So this session is about how to take the somewhat abstract uh, you know, goals and targets and initiatives and trans them, translate them into concrete results for your companies, for you to become the diversity hero and champion. So again, to reintroduce myself, I'm Anup Gupta, co-founder and CEO of Seekout. I am a geek and an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, I came to this country in 1980, got my PhD in computer science at Carnegie Mellon. I was a professor at Stanford uh, for 11 years. I sold my first startup to Microsoft in 97. I spent 18 years at Microsoft, including the privilege of directly reporting to Bill Gates as his technology advisor, running the Skype and Exchange businesses, running global technology policy. Our whole team at Seekout comes with deep background in AI, ML, uh, distributed systems, and our mission is to solve some of the hard problems that exist in this space. Seekout itself is a three and a half year old startup. Our mission is to provide companies like yourselves a competitive edge in recruiting hard to find and diverse talent. And we, don't, and we do know that people are the most important asset that a company has. And, and it's people who make organizations succeed. And that is why your roles are so important. And that is why we feel passionate about our mission. The Seekout technology today is used by some of the top companies from the top tech sector, pharma, defense, and really across all of the industries that exist. And my goal today is to share many of the examples from these companies and how they are using uh, Seekout and in particular with the focus on diversity to get results. Now, Seekout uh, is used in many, many different ways from how we find you talent beyond LinkedIn to deep talent analytics, uh, to diversity sourcing analytics, and how we mitigate unconscious bias, search engines, and lots of things. Today, our focus will be on diversity and how we can help in diversity recruiting. Before I dive too deep, I want to acknowledge that diversity is a very nuanced and multifaceted aspect. Uh, we know that diversity, while very important, 
is not sufficient without inclusion where people and without belonging where their people feel they're bringing their whole selves to the company, to their work, to the organization and contributing their unique perspectives to the success of companies. So while diversity, inclusion, equity, belonging are all very critical uh, in this session, our focus will be on hiring diverse talent. Here I'm showing a chart from GEMS 2020 recruiting report. And as you'll see that the top bar here is uh, that finding more diverse candidates to interview to address people in the top of the funnel before they flow down is very, very critical. The approach we're gonna take in some sense, uh, and this is the learnings from our customers is a variety. The first thing too is how do you specific target? So if your organization says, you know, we want to uh, increase the uh, representation of black and African-American people in leadership from three to 10%, how do you set that target? What is achievable? We'll talk about that. The second is how do we write including, inclusive job descriptions? And this is not just about the language contained in the job description. This is about the actual terms, the requirements that you pose. We all know that if we have too many requirements, then women often won't apply, apply if they're not meeting all of the requirements, where men will be very happy to raise their hands and apply and say, I'm the perfect candidate. So how do you work with hiring managers to adjust these requirements is a second topic we're gonna look at. Then we will talk about how do you strategically source and make sure that every one of the slates is a diverse slate and we know one candidate doesn't suffice. Then we will look into how we can mitigate unconscious bias. All of us have bias. And so any things we can do to reduce bias become important. And then we will also see that as talent flows through your funnel inside from the various stages of interview, how can we do a better job um, so that we are landing up with very strong and diverse uh, people at our companies? I personally learn best from going through concrete examples instead of just staying at the abstract layer uh, in looking at how technology can be an asset. So just as an example for today, we're gonna use uh, the role of a senior data scientist in a company to recruit and how do we build a diverse slate? How do we set targets? Um, and what you'll see here is just a job description and this is the real job description simplify with all of the technologies and requirements that we put in and the challenges that they create. Okay, so let's dig in and I promise to be not too geeky. Uh, here. So Seekout is a sourcing and engagement tool. You know, there's a dashboard where you can see your sourcing activity. There's AI matching that you can do just based on a, a job description. But we will start with just the search mode. You know, there are 622 million candidates worldwide and there's GitHub sourcing and there's people with papers, patterns, lots of things to be done. Uh, what we as an example, are looking at is data scientists. So I can come here and I can say data scientist, and I can go and look at candidate pools uh, for data scientists. And we see there are 60,400 candidates. I can look at insights. I can look at uh, what the diversity looks, uh, you know, what the diversity looks like for them. But we want to dig in still further. So one of the things that Seekout gives you as we are setting the targets is to understand what do talent pools look like. Uh, so you know we can look at a company comparison report on diversity. 
So what I have done here is I'm doing a company comparison report across, let's say my company's Microsoft and I've chosen Facebook, Google, IBM here. And I say generate a report. So what I'm seeing a chart here is because I generalized my search, there are 90,000 data science or data scientist candidates out there. And what you see in this graph is it is saying that 30% of the talent pool of these 90,000 people are female, that is there. And the percentage of data scientists at Microsoft is 32.7%, it's 39% for you know, Facebook and what these numbers look like. Now these are inferred diversity numbers and we have some very powerful AI ML technology that is there. But for example, when we come to black and African-American, we see the overall talent pool is 2.3%. You know, Microsoft is only 1.6, Facebook is 1.3, but you know, IBM is 4.1%. So this kind of data gives us insights into, you know, if IBM can do it, then why can't we do it? Or why can't we do even better uh, that is there? But you get a benchmark for, what does the talent actually look like as you're setting the goals for a specific target? As next step, let's say you are wanting to look at, you know, where might you go to hire? What might be some requirements to discuss with the hiring manager on uh, location flexibility? So one of the nice things is that uh, with the pandemic and remote work, the possibilities become so much. So we are again looking at the 90,000 uh, 100 these things. But let's say I was interested in finding some amazing black data scientists. All I have to do is to say, hey, let's look at the black data scientists and we will tell you what are the top locations, you know, where would you find most of these. So, you know, New York City, Barrier next, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Maryland. So these become the areas where you got to go and look. And you can see this is different from if you were not making any selection, then, you know, San Francisco, New York City, Seattle, Boston come up on the top. So this gives you an ability to say where we need to go and look and find and what kind of relocation budgets might be there or what is our openness to allowing remote work. Another possible thing you might think about is, if you remember, I had all these things, uh, you know, shown and read on the skills that are needed. We make it easy for you to plot here. You know, these are, again, the top skills for data scientists that are there. And we are saying amongst the talent pool, what percentage of the talent pool has those skills? So we can see that, you know, when it comes to machine learning, uh, you know, the black people have lesser of those skills that might be there, right? Means as we are looking at it or on Python, it is less, but data analysis, they are. So we can tune the skills and requirements that are there to make sure we have a more inclusive pool of candidates in the job description that we write. And of course, you know, here I am plotting it as, um, you know, a percentage, but if I stop plotting it as a percentage and look at the actual people, we can see how the talent pool and the numbers of people available become very small. So if we look at the scale of machine learning, you know, overall there are, you know, 30,000 people in the talent pool. There are 7,600 women that are there. Okay, but there are only 520 Black and African American peoples and 1,100 Hispanic candidates. So the data that we provide can really help you define the job requirements and say what needs to be done and whether machine learning is really required or what kinds of data analysis might exist so that you can be sharing well and still delivering on the company's vision and promise. Once you've negotiated uh, with the hiring manager, 
you know, an inclusive job description, the next task becomes actually finding uh, people and sourcing strategically candidates for the role. So here I've chosen again, data scientists in the Washington DC area, if you have decided there. Uh, CCAD makes it very easy for you to go and then say, hey, I would like to find black or African-American candidates. And as you can see, we find Ifeani, and you know, he's amazing. We look at the contributions to GitHub and papers that he has written, or Asa, you know, and from MIT. And so, you know, nobody can say these candidates don't exist. They are amazing candidates. And in fact, I can go and say, I would like to find female African-American candidates. And you can see here is Candace, and here is Christine Anzi, and here is Kayla. So those exist, or whether you want to go and just say, you know, okay, I would just like to find uh, female candidates, and there are some amazing people that here, you know, UC Berkeley physics, uh, UC Boulder, and data scientists, and who has published papers, who has contributed. So, of course, you know, these people are available, and we can find them. Uh, CCAD also makes it easy to go and find such people in your applicant tracking system. So, you know, this is actually CCAD's uh, this thing. And I could say, you know, here are data scientists in our applicant tracking systems who had applied. And you can see, you, you know, that we can find data scientists and Memorial Sloan Catering at the NY Mellon. We also give you the flexibility to go and search for these people amongst the connections. So this corresponds to ERG. So if you have a black ERG, a Hispanic ERG, a women's ERGs, you know, you can look that at the connections. So what we have done is we make it easy to import connections uh, from employees into uh, your seek out and then you can go and search and we show you how they are searched and it's easy to get feedback right within the, the systems to go and source. So we can let you strategically source, we can help you find amazing people and we can help you find them in the overall profile pools, in your ATSs, inside the team connections of your people, so you can rarely build these candidate sources. We also then let you do what we call blind hiring mode. And in blind hiring mode, you know, we remove the images, we hide the names. If there was an email available, we can hide the emails too. That is there, we give you flexibility in hiding the schools and education if you think that is important. So you see the education disappears. And this is how you can share the projects with the hiring managers to make sure that the bias that all of us has is limited and reduced as much as possible in review of candidates in giving the initial judgment on whether they're gonna meet the requirements or not. So what we have looked at so far is how we can set realistic role-specific diversity targets by understanding diversity in our company, at our peers, overall, in the nation or in a geography. How can we write better inclusive job descriptions to see how do the candidate pools change? We've seen how we can strategically source from our ATS, from our ERG connections and build projects and then use blind hiring you know, to reduce unconscious bias as we share with the hiring managers. And so this is used by the companies. The final thing I wanted to share is around diagnosing bottlenecks in the talent funnel. And here I wanted to show an example from one of our partners, Jem. And, you know, there are many other people who do it too. So here, let's look in. So here, what you see is happening is you know, these are the candidates that applied. So for engineering, you know, 235 women and 102 men applied or for sales, 87. And then you can see as you're going through the stages, what fraction of people are getting through. So for engineering, 56% of women are going from pre-interview to phone and here 74% of men going through. 
From phone to on site, again, there is 24%, and then 40% of men going in and 24% of women. And as you can see in the final higher rate, one out of 29 women who applied is getting hired, and one out of 13 men is getting is hired. And this is not a thing to say, you know, this um, wasn't a good process, but it causes you to look hard and say, are there biases in other stages? How can we improve our processes and pipeline to do better? So you can see how end-to-end -end from the requirements and the targets to the actual hires using modern data tools and things like Seekout and Gen, we can do better and we can produce real results. To look back, uh, you know, finally, um, I just wanted to emphasize that the capabilities that I've shown uh, are being used by some of the top names, top companies in the world. And there is an opportunity, you know, I hope you will give us a try. Seekout is also, you know, if you, this is G2 Crowd, which if you're familiar is one of the uh, main places where B2B, uh, SaaS and other companies are rated. Seekout stands at the top right as the highest performer and with the most capabilities and market presence on the Seekout front. And we are rated number one in 2021 when it comes to diversity uh, recruiting. You know, here are a variety of comments that you may find on G2 Crowd as having the best ability to drill down and provide data diversity. Uh, diversity data is a huge benefit or the platforms, uh, you know, includes many diverse filters to find the exact talent you're targeting. So I hope you will visit that and take a look and how we may add value to your diversity recruiting efforts and that real results can be achieved, you know, the high level uh, uh, goals translated into action and results that are there. And to just summarize, I think um, leveraging data insights uh, can be very powerful to engaging leadership. Uh, when we go from opinions to engaging with data, I know from my own experience that it can be much more productive. Using data as your ally in setting diversity targets, becoming a talent advisor to hiring managers becomes really critical. Uh, you know, that is the direction uh, the world is headed where data is helping drive our conversations and our insights and the actions that we take. And then I believe that data-driven diversity recruiting can help you actually achieve the diversity targets that you are setting and exceed the diversity targets as we have discussed throughout these tests of taking a systematic step-by-step -step approach to achieving uh, success. We will love the opportunity, you know, to share Seek Out with you and, uh, you know, uh, have you learn more about it. Uh, so please sign up for a demo by going to this link here at the bottom. And with the completion of a demo, we will also be delighted to, you know, share some swag with you. I know when, uh, you know, as we have not been meeting in person over the last year and a half, uh, many of us are missing swag, and so that is a wonderful opportunity for uh, that too. So thank you so much for spending time with me. Hopefully, uh, you know, the, there are some lessons in there that can be valuable to you in your own diversity strategy and success. Wishing you the best. Please stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.